What is good, you guys? It's your girl Nate, and I'm back with another video. Ooh, I just do it like that. Ooh. <laughs> okay, anywho, y'all, I'm here with another video, but today is not a tutorial or anything like that. We're here to tell a story. Well, I'm here to tell my story and where I've been. And for those who don't already be subscribed to me and you're looking this up because you're looking up Endo, welcome! So, first off, I've been MIA, obviously, for a minute because, quite frankly, my endometriosis has been ruining my life literally ruining my life but um i just wanted to share my story honestly because i feel like there's a lot of women who deal with it since it's so common but whenever you do find out that you have endometriosis you feel like you're the, you're the only one and i definitely felt like i was the only one for a long time so yeah let's get straight into it so for those who don't know what endometriosis is endometriosis is a disorder in which the tissue that normally lines the uterus grows outside of the uterus obviously like during periods we get a uterine lining and that's how we have periods you know what i'm saying because the uterine lining sheds now when you have endometriosis you grow tissue outside of where it's supposed to be which can be very painful and cause a lot of discomfort um especially it depends on the stage of endometriosis that you have but i think all of the people who have endometriosis can vouch and say that this shit sucks ass and it's painful as fuck. Point blank period. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. Now, with endometriosis, the tissue can be found anywhere. It can be found in your fallopian tube, your ovaries, your uterus, your intestines, your colon. Like literally any, any, anywhere in here, it can be there. And it's kind of weird how it does that. Like, I don't know. But, um unfortunately there is no cure for it so it's like the ones who have endometriosis we're just stuck with it for life and we have to just deal with it but when i tell you guys it's the most painful shit i've ever experienced in my life i'm sorry for all the curse words but i feel like it's needed like the most painful thing i've ever like ever experienced in my life like oh my god i think like honestly i've never had a kid yet but i can probably say it will be up there like having a kid and it's a lot of people have said it's just like having a kid every month but no baby so it can be like very draining mentally and physically but let's just get into it because you know i'm gonna just apologize in advance if i start talking everywhere it's just i be having so many things that i want to say and i just you know i get distracted but anyways so <laughs> we're gonna start off and i'm gonna tell you guys my symptoms and then i'm gonna go into my story of how i found out i have endometriosis so my symptoms that i had nausea fatigue constipation painful bowel movements bloody bowel movements vagina cramps abdominal cramps ass cramps like literally in your ass excessive bleeding fainting i'm not gonna say that i had fainting but i've been very clammy with hot flashes and got extremely lightheaded like i was going to pass out but I have not passed out, luckily, thank God. That's kind of just what I've had. And when I first, honestly, I don't know. Like, when I first started my periods, my periods were never really bad. And then they eventually just got bad. And I remember one day waking up, like, vomiting so much because I didn't know what was going on. I thought it was a side effect of a period. I'm not going to lie for the longest time, but it's actually probably not that common. But, um... Yeah, I've always had painful periods since I can remember when I moved back from Korea. That's like as far as I can remember back. Um, oftentimes there were days where I couldn't go to school because it was just so bad. And y'all, for my endo sisters who had an endo flare up, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Like, I feel like this disease is so disgusting and it ruins your life. How are you supposed to go about your normal daily life? How are you supposed to work and... You know what I'm saying? Be completely normal when, like, you're always in pain. Like, when I'm talking about pain, pain, like, imagine somebody trying to stab you in your abdominal right here and stabbing you in your back. Like, it's that bad. And a lot of people aren't aware of what endometriosis is. And most people just associate it as bad periods. It's more than a fucking bad period. Like, it's ridiculous how some healthcare providers will deny you the care you need or tell you you don't have something you know what i'm saying and it can be very draining mentally because it's like okay what is wrong with me luckily my ob and the er i went to they got it right the first time i haven't went through you know too much where people telling me i don't have it you know or whatever but for those who who are going through that and they're telling you that you're fine it's just bad periods 
I highly encourage you to go find a different provider. Just do it. Because I'm gonna be honest, these people don't know what they're talking about. Like, anywho, I'm gonna jump into my story. So it was October 31st, 2019, Halloween. I remember it like it was yesterday, y'all. I was on my way to school. I came home because I started feeling bad. I started getting these really bad cramps. My period had already went off. It was during my ovulation week. Oh my God, and for some reason, ovulation week is like awful too, but it was during ovulation week. And I'm like, okay, I can't be pregnant. It can't be a period. So I'm like, what is it? Like, I didn't know what it was. And it hurted so bad. So I was like, let me just go to the doctor. I could barely drive myself to the doctor. My boyfriend was at work, so he couldn't take me. When I tell y'all I was struggling to get to the doctor, but I didn't want to call 911. I didn't want no ambulance or nothing because I wasn't trying to get that ambulance bill. But I drove myself to the ER, y'all. And they did all of these tests, these CAT scans, vagina ultrasound regular ultrasound and they ended up finding out i have endometriosis and they only discovered mine because i have like stage four i think is the highest or it's up there you know what i'm saying and i guess they were able to discover it through the vagina ultrasound because i have a very thick endometrium wall and you can normally see that during your period and that's how you'll know your periods are going to be bad but the only true way to get a diagnosis is to get cut open unfortunately with the liposcopy but liposcopy they're little small cuts like the cuts would be like one in the belly button and two on the side but unfortunately i didn't get lucky i had to get a c-section cut and i had to get a c-section cut because they discovered i had a cyst the size of a cantaloupe do y'all know how big a cantaloupe is like i just showed y'all me standing up i look the exact same and they told me I had a cyst the size of a cantaloupe. And I didn't know how long I had it. That's the thing. So my um, ER doctor had told me that it was pretty big. It was like 11, 11 or 12 centimeters. And I ended up making an OB appointment. Um, and I went there. They did more tests. And then she also took the results that she had received from the ER so she could further look and she was like girl we have to do surgery like asap because if the cyst ruptured with how big it was it could mess up my whole insides like wipe out my whole reproductive system and all of that so i had surgery like within the next two weeks or so and i was very scared and anxious she told me that she would try to do liposcopy way first but if it wasn't going to work, obviously I would have to get a C-section cut. And if you don't know what a C-section cut, it's the cut that you get when you have a baby. Um, and y'all, when I tell y'all, like, the surgery wasn't that bad, but it was bad. But not as bad as the pain that I had from the flare-ups and stuff. Thank God she was able to go back and remove a lot of the tissue that was, the scar tissue that was there. And um, y'all, it's a lot of pain, like... And unfortunately, even though they do remove some of it, it still grows back. It's just what it is. So I had that happen and recovery for me took a lot longer than normal. Normally with liposcopy, you're able to return back to normal activities within the next couple of days. But I was out for like probably a week, not a week. It was probably three weeks, three, four weeks because I had an open wound. And, um... I wanted to say thank you to my boyfriend for always being supportive and being there for me. It literally, like, he's my backbone, for real. I'm gonna try not to cry, y'all, but I get emotional when I talk about this. This is why I hate talking about endometriosis. But I feel like I can help somebody else, so that's why I'm here. But anywho, so, like, on to the nitty-gritty stuff. As I was telling y'all, why well, didn't tell y'all, some of the symptoms also can be battling infertility. And I happen to take on that. So, um... As many, well, y'all don't know because I didn't post on this channel, but me and my boyfriend, we recently just bought our home and everything is just starting to come together. So we're like, okay, why not just try for, you know, our first baby and, you know, because I don't know, I felt like everything in our life was going right and I felt like we were in a good enough position to where we could have a baby. And then also with me having endometriosis, we knew that my time was kind of cut in half. So we was like, fuck it, let's just do it. So we were trying to get pregnant for like, two years actually still going on two years and um i ended up making an appointment to a fertility clinic and we went there he had to get a sperm analysis done i had to get a lot of blood work done 
and stuff and then like basically the fertility doctor was telling me that my ovarian reserve for my age should be between three and four but it's at a 1.5 which is awful um and if you don't know basically whenever a woman is born you're born with the amount of eggs that you're gonna have for the rest of your life like you don't get to add more you know what i'm saying it's just it is what it is so my ovarian reserve was cut in half and the doctor suggested that I just basically go forward with IVF. IVF is basically um, a procedure in which they take the male sperm and they take your eggs. And then they put it in a petri dish and they make a baby and they make the embryo. So the embryo is already made, the baby is made. And then once the baby is made, they put it inside of where it's supposed to be. Now the reason it's hard for me to conceive is because I have really, really, really really bad endometriosis to where my insides are sticking together and then I also had lost one fallopian tube when I got surgery so it's just like it just made everything a lot harder but yeah so like I was saying I'm gonna have to go through with IVF eventually if I get lucky and am able to conceive on my own I will be very blessed to do that um IVF also expensive AF a lot of insurances don't cover it well, put it this way. Some insurances cover it. It depends where you live. For example, I live in Texas, and the only way an insurance will cover it is if you're working, and then they, they add the extra care in there. And most of y'all know I work for myself, so I can't do that. So um, we're probably going to have to just pay, which is no biggie. But IVF, I think, is between 20 thousand like eighteen thousand and twenty thousand depending on where you live and then also IUI is another option. I think IUI is where they just insert the sperm inside but it really wouldn't do any good for me to just do that because obviously my insides are sticking together so it would just be a waste. And I also wanted to mention too um last year I had to get the HSG test done because I thought that my fallopian tube was blocked the one that I do have Oh my god, that was such a painful process. I thought I was going to die during that too, I swear. I was crying the whole time holding the lady's hand. But, um, yeah, so everything came back with my HSG test that everything was normal. So that's when we decided to go to a fertility clinic. Ooh, I don't like talking about this, you guys. But, yeah, I just wanted to say, if you have endometriosis, you're not the only one. And we are endo sisters. We're endo strong. We're endo warriors. I get emotional talking about it because ah, I don't like crying and I just am a miracle. But um, let me get myself together. Okay, it's just a lot to deal with mentally and physically. Um, I can't even talk, y'all. I just try not to get sad, but I be getting sad thinking about it. I will say, um. I've learned to manage with my cramps and stuff like that. I use a TENS machine and a heating pad. Regular pain medication, ibuprofen, Advil, Tylenol does not work. Nothing works. Like literally nothing works. So um, I think the only way to help improve your endo is to change your diet. Um, but that's also hard because the endo diet cuts out pretty much everything. Literally, like, I'm going to tell y'all because I put all of it in my notes. So the endo diet, they say no processed white sugar, no red meat, no lamb, no steak. Chicken is okay. Green leafy vegetables is good. No white rice, no brown rice. Only long grain rice. Only drink out of metal or glass water bottles. No fried foods. No foods rich and saturated in fat. No alcohol. No caffeinated beverages. No starchy foods. Swap all the white versions of food to brown if you need to. No dairy. I love milk. But if I drink milk or if I consume any of these things, it hurts my period so much more. But anywho, y'all. Um, like I was saying, it's a big emotional toll, and if you do have endometriosis, we are endometriosis strong. We are in this together. Some days you just want to cry, but... <laughs> Y'all, some days you want to cry, but it's going to be okay. And, yeah. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm sorry I'm crying. I just get emotional.
Especially with like the infertility stuff, y'all. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, comment below. I'll see y'all in the next video.